When the African Continental Free Trade Area was initially proposed at the African Union Summit in 2012, it had two goals. First, to build a pan-African free trade and cooperation, and second, to lift 100 million people out of poverty by instituting structural economic changes and cooperative legislation. The trade bloc's establishment signified a monumental paradigm shift in African trade and development. For years, African trade has been mostly limited to colonial trade routes with its former colonial masters, a practice that has resulted in the continent's countries trading more internationally than among themselves. With the AFCFTA, a combined $3.4 trillion economic bloc that includes 1.3 billion people is expected to become the world's largest free trade zone, only second to the World Trade Organization. Along with it would come the promotion of industrialization, creation of much-needed jobs, and improvement of competitiveness of African industries on the global stage. In short, Africa's fortunes were supposed to change dramatically. But, as the trade bloc enters its first few years, it is becoming apparent that African nations are not the ones who will be reaping the bloc's greatest benefits. China is. China is now Sub-Saharan Africa's most visible and biggest trading partner, a role that has even positioned it to shape policy across the continent. Trade between China and Africa almost doubled between 2020 and 2021, and over the last 20 years, trade between China and the continent has increased a mind-boggling 20-fold. New Beijing-backed factories are popping up every day in Africa, despite accusations of violating labor and human rights laws. A post-Brexit United Kingdom is hoping to re-enter the African market as a trade partner and beneficiary of the free trade area. But London cannot possibly compete with Beijing's almost extravagant spending. Through its spending sprees, Beijing is shifting African policy in its favor. For instance, after a 40 billion pledge in Chinese investments to Nigeria in 2017, the Nigerian government reduced the diplomatic status of Taiwan and ordered Taipei's trade mission out of Abuja. Over the last decade, a diplomatic rivalry between China and Taiwan had begun to reemerge on the African continent. China and Taiwan jockeyed for formal recognition from African countries during the Cold War and after, using aid, development projects and other incentives until an unofficial truce was called in 2008. But in 2016, the Gambia resumed ties with China after severing its diplomatic relations with Taiwan. The same year, the African island nation of Sao Tome and Principe rescinded official recognition of Taiwan, leaving Taipei with only two diplomatic partners on the continent, Eswatini and Burkina Faso. But in mid-2018, Ouagadougou couldn't resist China's goodies anymore. They caved, and since then only one African country, Eswatini, remains in Taiwan's scope of influence, while China has gone on to become a hegemon thanks to its checkbook diplomacy. Beijing's fear of influence in Africa can also be seen at the United Nations. In June 2020, 25 African countries backed Beijing during a vote about the controversial Hong Kong national security law. All these chess moves mean one thing. China's presence in Africa is extremely strategic. In exchange for its no-strings-attached investments and deals, Beijing has been on a spree developing new allies and expanding its global influence in a way that rivals the West. China portrays itself as a growing superpower, a narrative it uses to sell itself as anti-West and a promoter of equal development. As Western influence in Africa has been dropping, India, Russia and Turkey have been expanding their networks across the continent with new loans, trade deals and military agreements, but China remains unhinged. With all these deals, China, not Africa, has laid the foundation and is positioned to reap the benefits from the AFCFTA. 
Chinese companies have dominated the continent's transport and infrastructural development projects, especially in countries south of the Sahara. In 2018, Chinese funding made up a quarter of the more than $100 billion committed towards infrastructure development in Africa. The year before, Chinese farms won an estimated 50% of the continent's engineering, procurement and construction contracts. There is a reason for this. The focus on intra-African trade involves China in two main ways. First is trade and second, the building of infrastructure to facilitate that trade. According to AFCFTA Secretary General Wamkere Mene, if you don't have the roads, if you don't have the right equipment for custom authorities at the border to facilitate fast and efficient transit of goods, if you don't have the infrastructure, both hard and soft, it reduces the meaningfulness of the free trade area. The Chinese government wants to boost its links to East and North Africa through its Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to create a new Silk Road and ties more countries into its economic orbit. One caveat is that African exporters and companies from across the world can use the Chinese infrastructure to transport their goods. These are not purely China-focused projects. Nevertheless, China is said to be a major beneficiary of the drive to build new African trade corridors and the infrastructure to link African raw materials to processing centers and markets. The AFCFTA is designed to boost trade among African partners. But that very reason alone could and will cause the most friction with China. Some analysts argue that China's role as the world's factory has stunted the development of African manufacturing and supply chains. Kenya's cement export to East African neighbors have been low due to an influx of cheap Chinese cement. Over the past 10 years, Tanzania and Uganda increased their imports from China by 60%, while sourcing just 4 to 6% of industrial products from Kenya. Chinese products are often cheaper than their African counterparts. The real test of the AFCFTA, however, will be how quickly African countries can accelerate export diversification and product sophistication and make trade more African inclusive. Another challenge is that the free trade deal does not include a common external tariff, leaving it up to each country to decide what duties it will impose on Chinese goods as opposed to negotiating with China as a single unit. Furthermore, today, the African market remains primarily an extractive one, abundant in natural resources, raw materials and primary goods. Unfortunately, these raw materials are not processed on African soil but shipped off to China for processing and then re-imported back as finished products. Rather than creating an equal economic partnership, these trade deals tend to favor China. Since the year 2000, Africa's trade balance with China has been on a downward trend meaning that the continent's imports far exceed its exports, a trend that is poised to continue in the future. In 2019, Africa's trade deficit with China was well over $17 billion. The sheer scale of this deficit has shifted African nations' economic dependence from their former colonial partners like the UK and France to China. Currently, Beijing is outsourcing the manufacturing of cheap consumer packaged goods to Africa and passing it off as its own, an act that will only hurt African countries that aspire to compete globally. When the AFCFTA was first proposed, the African Union argued that the bloc would enable countries to develop greater capacity for local manufacturing which they could then use to trade globally with bigger and more favorable terms. But this is not what has happened, since the infrastructure is often ultimately constructed by Chinese manufacturers, engineers and laborers. These projects actually connect Chinese businesses with emerging African markets. 
African companies desperately need to build up their capacity to scale up to the point where they will benefit from the new free trade area. You see, Kenyan cement will hardly be enough to satisfy the demands of a continent, nor even would Dangote cement from Nigeria and its subsidiaries on the continent. For now, the Chinese can undercut many local producers. This means that it is still Chinese-owned manufacturing companies that will continue to dominate the continent's manufacturing sector and profit from this new trade deal. In 2017, over 10,000 Chinese-owned farms were operating across Africa. China's Transion Holdings currently has an estimated 40% market share in the East African mobile phone market. StarTimes, another Chinese company, has grown into one of Africa's biggest pay television providers and currently boasts more than 10 million subscribers across 30 African countries. Despite these red flags, many African countries still view Beijing as a desirable partner. And maybe it is. I mean, compared to traditional partners that represent former colonial masters, it could just be a case of better the devil you know. What do you guys think? Which trading partners should Africa engage with moving forward? Let me know in the comments. For a smooth rollout of the AFCFTA, countries have to agree on some of the remaining issues such as the rules of origin. The World Trade Organization defines rules of origin as the criteria used to define where the product was made. For example, Volkswagen could seek to use its planned operations in Ghana to export to the economic community of West African nations. And when the AFCFTA is fully operational, the auto manufacturer could in theory sell its cars tariff-free all over Africa. These are some of the kinds of threats to African commerce that need to be addressed. But even as trading within Africa continues, the road to full implementation remains long. So while the AFCFTA is an important step forward towards the continental economic integration, there remains some obstacles to overcome, especially ones that unwittingly or inadvertently puts China's interests ahead of Africa's interests. There you go guys, I would like to thank our great supporters on Patreon whose generous contributions allow us to keep creating more high quality content. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely enjoy the ones on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.